Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Kelsey. I'm Kelsey Oki here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today we are going to be on our hands. This is perfect for those of you that are wanting to get your hands in because we are really going to be building all that kind of strength that you're going to need to get upside down. Yes, today we are going to be using the wall, but using the wall is not a bad thing. It really helps you find your strength, your confidence, your awareness, and then when you want to get away from a wall, you're going to have a little bit more know abouts uh, to be able to do that without the wall. So don't feel bad about using it. You're not going to use it forever, but today it's our friend. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you are warmed up. You've done some plank holes. You've done your sit-ups. Your core is engaged because we are ready to get right upside down. So have a nice clean area of your wall. No mirrors, no pictures. You don't want to break anything. And then maybe a mat or something that you can have nice and stable down on the ground because you're going to be on it a lot on your hands. The first thing that we're going to do is my favorite way to warm up for handstands is shoulder shrugs. So when we have our hands on the floor, obviously in the opposite position, we are not going to bend the elbows. All we're going to do is drop in through the shoulders and push back out. So they're like push-ups, but with the arms straight the whole time. So let's go ahead and kick up. We are going to do two sets of 10. And now you can have both legs on the wall or you can pull one knee in a little bit. Go ahead and kick up and I'll show you what I mean. So both feet on the wall like this, it gives you a bit of a banana back. So I like to sometimes bend one leg and then just straighten the other one. It gives me a little bit more of a straight back. Pull your core in, squeeze your butt, and now just drop in 10 times. Make sure that you are keeping everything through the center as tight as you can keep it. I got three more. And then go ahead and come down nice and easy onto the balls of the toes. Shake out the wrists a little bit. Do this a lot in between your kickups. Make sure that your wrists are not getting too burned out. And then let's go ahead and do our second set. Hands down and pick up. Let's switch legs this time. And let's go for 10. Make sure that you keep your breath smooth and steady. Fix your gaze on something that's not moving and just get really calm while you're upside down. Last two. And last one. Nice and easy come down. Like I said, balls of the toes. So whether you're kicking up or coming back down, really get into the habit of using the balls of your toes. I mean, think about it when you jump, you don't jump with flat feet. You jump on the balls of your toes. It kind of makes you feel a little bit more buoyant, a little bit more light and quiet. So do that too when you are kicking up in your handstand, nice and easy, balls of the toes, not a flat foot. All right, so the next one that we're going to do is these headstands into forearm stands. So I know we're no, mostly doing handstands today, but this one is in headstand. And all you're going to do is get your arms down on the ground, forearms parallel. You know that by grabbing opposite elbow, placing them back down. And now we're just gonna kick up into the wall, find that headstand, and we're going to lift up 10 times, getting our head off of the ground. So let's go ahead nice and easy, kick up, find the wall, wrap the head down. All right, you got your headstand. Now we're gonna lift up 10 times. Push up, get the head off the ground, lower it back down. Here we go, let's do 10. Again, keep that core engaged, butt squeezing, legs are active. Again, here you could let one leg kind of be drawn in a little bit, just resting the toes, getting a little of that banana back out of the picture. Last two. And last one. Nice and easy, come down. Maybe this time you don't need to shake out the wrist, but you could soften the shoulders. Let them fall away from your ears. And we have another set. So we don't want to cool down in between. We just want to let things soften so they're not locking up, not causing injury. Get the arms down again in parallel. And here we go, let's kick it up. And lower the head down. Get yourself nice and balanced. And then 10 lifts. Into your forearm stand, your pinch them out of your ass, now whatever you want to call it. Get those shoulders, those lats. Get it all working and warmed up. Just a few more. Last one and come down. Whew, okay, so we've got one more. 
pretty intense little drill while we're down a little bit here closer to the floor and then we've got more handstand work to do so the next one is a bit of a doozy it is a plank hold with our hands on the ground and our feet on the wall and if planks are your jam maybe this won't be a big deal but it's kind of challenging so don't be uh, surprised if this is harder than what you think it would be we're just going to do three sets only a 10 to 15 second count so get your hands down on the ground just like you would for any other plank and then you're going to walk your feet up the wall so we want to find as close as we can to a plank position all right get that core engaged squeeze that butt push out of the shoulders once you are there let's hold it for i don't know 15 all right 14 13 12 pull your belly in 11 10 push out of those shoulders nine eight seven keep breathing six five four three two and down nice and easy if you're having a hard time coming out of that the leg that comes down first with the opposite foot so the foot that's on the wall push it into the wall and then you can easily lower that other foot to the ground if this is really hard for you feel free to just practice it in your regular plank hands and feet down on the ground or doing going <laughs> doing going down on your forearms and doing it like this a little bit more manageable all right let's get ready for that second set shake out those wrists and here we go 15 seconds in our wall plank position once you are in 10 to 15 seconds hold and push make sure you're rounding out of that upper back belly pulling towards the spine 10 more strong spine last five four three two and one let's easily down Ooh, so i can hold plank for well over a minute on the floor but doing it like this with the feet up it's definitely a little bit more challenging it puts a lot more of that strength and that weight into the shoulders which is the same thing that's going to happen in handstand so we have to get used putting more weight into the upper body than in the lower body. So completely the opposite of what we're used to. That's why we do these drills to kind of get our body, our mind prepared before we go ahead and get upside down. All right, one more. Let's just get the dang thing done. We have to do those things that are challenging to us. That's how we grow. So if this is really hard, again, drop the forearms or maybe let the feet come up a little bit higher. That's okay. Let's do it. 10, oh, 15. 14, 13, grip the ground, 12, 11, 10, 9, watch that core, 8, 7, 6, 5, squeeze your butt, 4, 3, keep rounding and pushing, 2, 1, go ahead and come down, Whew. okay, shake out the shoulders, shake out the wrists. Very good job. I know that's very challenging. So work in baby steps. You know, you don't have to be there today, but you've got some ideas of where you're going to work towards, or maybe you're there and you're nailing it. So good for you, whatever you did. I'm sure you did your very, very best. So don't be discouraged. Okay, the next thing we're going to start doing is kickups. And I've mentioned this in my other handstand videos. Kickups are huge for developing that strength in handstand. So if you've kicked up a thousand times and you're like, Kelsey, I'm still, I'm just not getting it. You are getting it. Those kickups are huge for building strength, for building awareness. Keep doing them. There's nothing wrong with kicking up. I still have bad days where I'm like, man, I kicked up 15 times before I could get up. That's just how that goes. So don't be too discouraged with yourself. So when we kick up, we want our hands down on the ground, just like you would for a plank position, facing towards the wall, push out of the shoulders, make sure that you're pressing down at the base of the thumb and the index finger. And now when we kick up, let's do about 10 to 15 times on each leg. And this time when we kick up, the leg that I kick off of, which I'm going to start with my right, I'm going to pull it in towards the belly. I'm not going to raise it up towards the ceiling. So let's go ahead, 10 to 15, whatever you got in you. Left leg reaches, a little kick off the balls of the right toes. Lift it up, pull that right leg in, come back down, land quietly. Let's do about 10 more. As you kick off that leg, Big push out of the shoulders. Belly pulls in. Everything gets really, really tight. By pulling this right leg in towards the belly, 
you're helping to engage the core a little bit more. Nice and quiet as we kick up. Nice and quiet as we land down. Let's do two more. Push at the top. Shift into those fingers and grip the ground. Nice and easy, come down. Shake it out. We gotta do the other side. So I'm not sure if you're like me, but my right leg is a bit stronger, a bit more dominant than my left leg. So I'm not always as good at kicking up out of that left leg, but we try to find that balance, that equanimity. So we gotta do both legs. Let's do the second side, whether we want to or not. All right, this time we're gonna pull that left knee in. Let the right leg come up towards the wall. So big push. Pulling that knee in close to the belly as it raises up. See, as you, if you watch, I kick up and I pull that left knee in. Doesn't automatically want to go there, so I have to engage it. I'm thinking compression, engagement. Let's do two more. Last one. Very good, come down quietly. Whew. Okay, again, shake the wrists. I think it's a really nice way to reduce inflammation in the hands and the wrists. They're not used to carrying all of our weight. I mean, we walk on our feet everywhere we go. Our hands are like, no. <laughs> it's hard to get that strength through the wrists, through the forearms, through the shoulders. So definitely give them some time to decompress while they build strength because they are not your ankles. They don't have these hips holding them. It's the shoulders and the wrists, totally different ball games. So please, please, please be careful and listen to them. Take breaks when you need it. All right, so we got more work to do. We are going to do alternating toe taps. Sorry, I'm checking my list here. So now we are going to kick up and we are going to rest one foot on the wall and we're kind of just gonna alternate. So I will show you and then we'll do it together. So a little kick up. I'm gonna bend one knee so that the toes rest. Now in the beginning, you might just Slide the legs to alternate. That way one is always on the wall. The reason why I like this is not only does it keep the core a bit engaged with that bent leg, but then we also take a little bit of that banana back out and you get the idea of stacking the hips over the shoulders. Now, if you don't need to keep one foot on the wall all the time, you'll do a little bit more of a trade-off so that one is kicking off as the other one is bending and you make it a little bit more fluid. So up to you how slowly you wanna move through this, but let's do some alternating toe taps on the wall and you get the idea of getting those hips right over the shoulders, holding the weight in your hands, and maybe getting the legs to float off of the wall just for that little half a second in between so that you know what that balance really feels like. All right, let's go for it. Hands down, a gentle kick up. I guess I'm gonna start with my right toes on the wall. And I'm just gonna do these little switches. Just resting the tiptoes on the wall and not really bringing too much of the weight into my feet, just enough for balance. Make sure that you are pushing out of the shoulders. Make sure that you are pulling the navel towards the spine and using your fingers to grip at the ground. That way you don't feel like you're gonna fall forward. Let's do 10 more seconds. Woo! Guess that was that. <laughs> Shake out the wrists. Call me a breath. So that's also a really nice way too to start building up that strength. As you stay there longer and longer, you are forcing the shoulders, the forearms, the wrists, the core to start taking on more and more of the weight that they're not used to holding. So slowly building up that time, set a timer when you're on the floor. Start with 30 seconds, see if you can build a 45 and then a whole minute. You don't really need to do a whole lot more than a minute. I find after that, you start to really aggravate the nerves and the muscles through the forearms and they start twitching and getting really angry at you. So, you know, I would stick around the minute range and if you wanna do sets of one minutes, make sure that you're resting them in between. 
Another nice way to do that is to do it belly to the wall, which makes it a little bit more challenging because you definitely have more of a balance issue that way, but that's a nice way to really kind of up your game a little bit. All right, so the next one that we're gonna do is a similar type of thing, but now we're going to do an L leg shape and we're going to face belly to the wall rather than belly away from the wall. So the two different ways that you can approach getting that way is to just put your hands down facing away from the wall, hands down, and walk your feet up and then walk your hands into wherever you need them. Or another option, if you feel comfortable with a little bit of a cartwheel motion, you kind of start off to the side and we're gonna cartwheel our hands down, pointing away from the wall. So a little cartwheel and a kick up. So either way, whatever you'd like to do to get into your handstand hold. So now we wanna get our hands walked out far enough that we can make a 90 degree angle with the wall and the floor. Now we'll start with lifting the right leg and keeping the left leg on the floor. Keep pushing out of the shoulders. And then we're gonna switch legs. Right leg down, left leg up. Let's switch, left leg down, right leg up. Point the toe, reach tall. Let's switch, right down, left up. Maybe coming onto the tiptoes now, and kind of just popping off the wall a little bit as we bring the weight forward into the hands. Let's switch. Left leg on the wall, right leg reaches. Maybe little hops as we find a little courage, a little balance. Let's do another leg switch. Right leg down, left leg floats. Maybe popping away from the wall a little bit more. And one more switch. Left leg down, right leg reaches. Very good. Now both legs down and feet on the floor. Whew, I bet your shoulders are starting to feel it because I know that mine are. Very good work. Soften them away from your ears once you're back on the floor. We got a little bit more work to do still. All right, so the next one that we're going to do is a combination of holding some weight on our hands and also lowering down, which I think is a really great way to build strength through the shoulders. So again, we're gonna face away from the wall, we're gonna walk our feet up, and we're gonna find like a froggy type hold with the legs out to the sides. So go ahead and get the hands down, walk the feet up, and we're gonna walk the hands in this time so that we can get the knees on the wall. Once the knees are on the wall, open them up, you're gonna get a nice little hip opener here, and you're gonna really push out of the shoulders. Hold this little froggy stance, let's say for 10 seconds. Keep pushing, softening the hips while you're at it. After we've been here just a few more seconds, then we're gonna work on that lower. So now tuck the toes under, getting the hips a little higher over the shoulders. Look down between the hands and nice and easy, let's float the feet to the floor. Let's do that two more times. Hands down, if you need to shake them out, shake them out and meet up me there. Walk the feet up, open the knees wide. Kind of resting into the wall here, opening up the hips. Push, push, push out of the shoulders, strong arms. Maybe even just dropping the head in so that you can shake out the neck. Now let's tuck the toes and find that lower. Hips come high. Bring the weight into the hands even more and slowly lower the feet. We got one more just like that. A little shake of the ribs. And here we go. Hands down, hips up. Get the knees onto the wall. Open up those hips. And let's hold for 10. Keep that pushing. Strong, strong upper back. Pull the belly in. Last three, two, and one. Tuck the toes. Let the hips come high. Gaze is four between the thumbs. And a gentle lower of the feet. Very good. Whew, I'm starting to sweat. I'm sure that you guys are too. Let's check in. What else do we have left? All right, so we've got two more exercises while we are here on the wall. The next one is a bit challenging. 
And I know I don't hit it every single time, so don't beat yourself up if you don't either. We're going to be doing tuck jumps. So instead of a single leg jump, we're jumping both feet at the same time. So we're going to face towards the wall, hands down, and then two feet at a time, we're gonna hop the feet up. Like I said, it doesn't always hit. Don't worry if it doesn't. It's still about building that strength. So shift forward, two feet at the same time, all the way up, tap, and come back down. Now, if yours is a little bit more like, oh, <laughs> that's okay. Just make sure that you have a very sturdy wall and do your best. It will get quieter, floatier, a little easier with practice and with time. So just keep showing up. All right, here we go. Let's aim for 10. Going as quickly or as slowly as you need to. My suggestion is to go slow and really think about each movement. All right, here we go, hands down. I'm gonna come into a deep little yogi squat and off the balls of the toes, tap the toes to the wall, bring them down together at the same time. So think about where your hips are in space. Your hips are your center of gravity. So if your hips don't get up high enough, you're not gonna find the wall. Looking right down between the thumbs, pushing out of the shoulders the whole time. Please do not stop that push. That is maybe the single most important thing about building your strength for your handstand. Let's do two more, I lost count. And the last one, let's do it. I know those are tough. So just hang in there with it, do the best you can. Like I said, even if your feet don't touch the wall when you do those tuck jumps, you're still building that strength through the legs. You're building the awareness of being upside down and your shoulders are getting stronger because whether your feet hit the wall or not, you're still putting that strength, that weight into your shoulders and into your hands. So bear, bear with it, hang in there, it gets better. All right, we got one more drill to do and we're just gonna hold it. So. Sometimes it's easier to move than it is to be still. And I know that that's true for me. I prefer movement. Static holds can be very uncomfortable and I get in my own head. So sometimes we gotta just settle in and be there and that's okay. So we're gonna kick up belly to the wall. So you can walk in like I showed you earlier, or you can do that little cartwheel move to the side, up to you. And then once we get there, let's count it out. Let's try to be there for as long as we can, but not more than a minute. And let me, back, let me grab my little timer here. That way I know we don't go over a minute. All right, so I got a minute timer set right there. Once I kick up, I will start it. That way we know we don't go over. And here we go, hands down, kick up, belly to the wall, starting this timer. Here we go. So I'm gonna point the toes. I'm gonna rest my legs on the wall. And I'm gonna pull my belly in. Push out of the shoulders. Make sure that you are pressing down at the heel of the hand, the base of your thumb. Push, push, push. Let the shoulders rise up to the ears. Squeeze your butt. Belly button towards your spine. Engage your legs and reach tall into your toes. That's already 30 seconds. And now let's breathe. Seven more seconds to hit that minute. You got it. There we go, I'm gonna walk it out. Ooh, and cartwheel down. Whew, all right. So if you guys really enjoyed this workout, I already have a different handstand video uploaded with other drills different than what we did today. I wouldn't do it on the same day. Maybe give yourself a day off and do it again in the next day. You don't want to blow out your wrists. Very, very good job today, guys. You did amazing. I'm so proud of you. Please let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section. Give me a follow on Instagram. I do a lot of handstand stuff there. Have an amazing day, guys. Take care.
Namaste.